Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Posters have been placed around the London Underground Network warning that intrusive staring is a form of sexual harassment and if it persists, you should inform the police. Damn it hijab, stop that! <laughs> A YouGov poll has found that 70% of women have been harassed in public. 4 out of 10 have been touched inappropriately. So naturally that leads us to the pressing question. Where is this coming from mate? Alright let's break this down using some studies and some academia. Well firstly, cinema glorifies two people looking eyes across a room. The lights dim, okay then you've got the, the, the ray of light on the person, okay then you, then you get the violins playing. You know what I'm saying? Clothing also plays a role. Gurang and Trouser 2007 found that women were more sexually objectified when they wore provocative clothing that accentuated their sexual body parts. Gervais and others in 2011 found that people had difficulty matching the bodies and faces of women with exaggerated sexual body parts. In other words, if foolishness is going on down there, no one's paying attention to your face mate. In terms of dialoguing and speaking with each other, in the west eye contact is seen as being polite, whilst in the east it might be considered opposite. But the preferred length to be looking at somebody they say, not in, in conversation but you know out and about, is 3 seconds. Anything longer is in dangerous territory, 9 seconds is too much. A recent study found that a mutual gaze leads to a kind of partial melding of the self and the other. Uh, <laughs> these aren't my words yeah. We rate strangers with whom we've made eye contact as more similar to us in terms of personality and appearance. In other words, the hanky panky starts at the looky wooky. Another study showed that users of dating websites quickly determined how dateable you were just by looking at your profile picture. And I guess that's why you've got websites or sorry apps like Tinder that do so well. You look at the person, couple of seconds mate and then you swipe. You've made your whole decision about that person just on the size of their lips or, or I don't know their cheekbones or their nose or whatever. So in other words if you're looking at somebody it's seldom something that's innocent because unconsciously what you can do in those few seconds is, is this person compatible to me? Are they attracted to me? Are they this? Are they that? In another article that I saw on Insider, they say that we judge people on their wearing of branded clothes, having tattoos, their types of hair, their, well or hair growth, having a baby face and more. Yeah, we'll judge their earning ability, we'll judge their charisma, we'll judge how much we, we trust them or how successful they are. You might say, that guy's lying mate. It's like, uh, look I'm not saying it's done consciously, you know, okay this person is this, it's done unconsciously. That if somebody was to then put a gun to your head and ask you those questions, you'd be able to answer them just by looking at somebody. They say that our eyes is the only part of the brain that's in direct contact with the world. That's because the eye connects to the brain via the optic nerve. And then the BBC Future article goes on to say, when you look another person in the eye then just think, it is perhaps the closest you will come to touching brains. Other people go on to say that people's eyes are gateways into the soul. So in other words mate, the eyes are no joke. With all that said and done, let's see what the Holy Quran says. Tell the believing men to lower their gaze and guard their chastity. And then in the next sentence it says, and tell the believing women to lower their gaze and guard their chastity. So Islam has been saying this for 1400 years plus mate. <laughs> and the tube station just adopted it now. Bear in mind this also involves lowering your gaze when looking at certain adverts. It could be on YouTube, it could be on television, it could be during movies and, and adverts and the likes because look if you're looking at these images, they've got you know cameras positioned at a certain angle, that you've got lighting, you've got makeup, you've got certain things that have been added on like extended eyelashes or different hair or whatever it is, maybe even plastic surgery. In other words, there are unrealistic beauty standards which 
when you get married, your partner is going to be unrealistic for them to meet those standards. And if you're constantly looking at women and comparing and you think it's normal, there's nothing wrong with that mate, then what you're going to do when you actually get married, it's going to be tough. Yeah, It's going to be tough for that other person to live up to that unrealistic standard. Because let's face it, When's the last time you saw somebody without makeup in, in the media? You don't, but you're going to be seeing your partner without makeup for a large chunk of the day. In the morning without makeup and then in the evening without makeup. So yeah, these people mock Islam, but Islam works. And now it's these very principles that are preached by Islam that you're trying to use to rescue your societies. I mean, don't get me wrong, we don't mind, take it. In fact, we invite you to adopt more principles and in fact adopt Islam into your life and then you will see how it truly rescues you, your societies and your soul. Whoa. And that's why I'm going to put some links in the description if you want to order a free Quran, you want to learn more about Islam, go ahead, do so and then you'll see what the fuss is about. I'm going to leave it there guys, until next time. Assalamu alaikum.